Welcome into the Drew Panthers Coaches Show, brought to you by Hold Fast Brewing. Steve Casson, along with the assistant coach of the Drury Panthers, Cliff Cook, and Brett Lathan. And guys, yesterday and uh, Friday, kind of a strange weekend, 7-1 victory over East Texas Baptist, and then a 3-2 overtime loss yesterday. Uh, what was the difference? Uh, it was kind of a tale of two teams, I'd say. Friday, you know, we put some things together. Cody Lorenko had the game of his life with four goals, uh, which was nice. We've been looking, as we've talked about, a long time for that secondary scoring. Can't rely so heavily on, on those top guys to, to win us every game. And so getting the secondary scoring was nice. We could have used some of that yesterday um, in the overtime loss. But, you know, we put ourselves in that position. Um, you know, credit to East Texas Baptist for the win. Um, I, I would argue they didn't play their best game yesterday either. Um, we just couldn't capitalize and credit where credit's due, their goaltender stood on his head. Um, so, and we hit a handful of posts as well, which didn't help our cause any. In game one, Cody Lorenko, four goals. In fact, the hat trick, a natural hat trick, but what do you call it when you get four straight goals is what he had. Two epic. power play goals, epic, there you go. You know, he said when I talked to him that uh, it's a once off thing, he doesn't believe it'll happen again, but two of the goals were great. They were almost carbon copies of each other from the high middle slot, uh, great shots right around the blue line. Uh, that meant obviously it was going in, there was a lot of traffic in front. Yeah, he's got really good hands too. Um, he's a lacrosse guy. And he plants himself in the uh, in the slot, and he's hard to move. He he takes a beating, and and it paid off for him. Yeah, it's I, I would reiterate the lacrosse thing with him. We see it in practice all the time. He, he's got some of the best hands on the team, especially when the puck's in the air, just because he's used to that. And then uh, I would argue the fourth goal might have been the best of all of them. Yeah, it's just yeah. A, an absolute snipe. Yeah, just off the draw and boom. Yeah. Situation where kind of momentum shifts were all about that game, and all of a sudden Drury takes it, uh, obviously on the strength of the four goals, but what do you look at this weekend that you'll put into following weekends to think, okay, we may have to do something different? It's, it's the simple thing in any sport. You, you, know, you have a nice big win one night. You can't just show up and expect to do it the next night. We didn't have you know, the work ethic we should have had uh, in Saturday's game. Um, we did not help our goaltender at all. Uh, you know, he he deserved better. We, did, you know, a lot of guys that don't get to play a lot as well deserve better. We got some guys in the lineup yesterday that d don't play much, and they had good games, but because it became tight late, you know, they didn't get much playing time. So we just got to realize that we have to play a 60-minute game every single night. You can't. We and we've done it a couple times this year where. We've gotten away with it in the past where we show up game two after a blowout the night before and don't put in the work but still find a way to win. We, we couldn't do that last night. And this is a situation where you have a top line of Ethan O'Rourke, Jacob Hawley, and Keegan Ferguson. And with the exception of Ferguson's first goal in the first game, it was other lines doing the scoring. And that's something that you guys really wanted to get out of this team, not to have one line do everything. Yeah, yeah, we that's I mean, we touched on it earlier with with Cody's four goals. Um that line's a hard working line. They're going to they're going to grind you out. Um and they'll get in some and they'll get some goals in. They should get some goals in. Our second and third, our second and fourth line should do the um get some scoring too. Xavier had a really nice goal. Um so it was nice getting the the secondary scoring that, that we had first night. The nice thing about the secondary scoring is if you're still getting the primary scoring as well. Absolutely. which we really didn't this weekend. So if you can get both those things happening to where it's no longer considered secondary scoring and you're just getting it up and down the lineup, that's when those 11-1 games like we've had a couple times this year show up. And that's where, I mean, I, in my opinion, that's where we should be most nights, uh, especially the, the games we've played so far. It's going to continue to get tougher, though. We've got tough weekends coming up. You, know, you talk about uh, Abel getting the goal. He's the goal scorer that chased Gavin McCutcheon, who played the first game, and then they put in their backup goaltender, Mika Crevier, uh, which, uh, at least in game one, was uh, no match for the Panthers. But then you go into game two, and McCutcheon plays like his 905 save percentage uh, really meant something. How do you get and break through those types of situations. Obviously, it's tough to do it during the game, but uh, it's one thing to think about it after the game. It's so hard to convince guys because the, the more frustrated they get that they're not putting pucks in the net, you know, the tighter the grip on the stick, I mean, kind of the cliches in hockey. And 
you know, uh, we mentioned the top line not scoring. I mean, I think Ferguson hit, what, three or four posts this yeah, weekend. Yeah, posts or crossbars, yeah. Yeah, um, O'Rourke was having his opportunities. Uh, Holly had a breakaway, and it's just, you know, it was a great goaltending duel yesterday, and I thought both guys played well. We put twice as many shots on their guy. Uh, I think they had the higher quality chances, which is probably why things were, I mean, we, we took a lot of shots, some were from long range, but... You know, he made, what's it, McCutcheon? He, he probably made, I would say, three monster saves that, that saved them the game. He made one in overtime on uh, O'Rourke that I, I was convinced we had won the game at that point. Maybe I jinxed it. I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, Fergie even celebrated. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, he, he played great, but Josh played great. It's just that was, you know, if you're – as a coach, you're frustrated watching it. As a parent, you're probably frustrated watching it. But as a fan, it was probably a lot of fun to watch, you know, just the back and forth battle. Uh, you look at this team right now, they are 10-3-1, and one, but the big key right now, 2-4 and four at home, and <laughs> that is tough. But on the road, you're undefeated. Well, give us some credit. We're 2-3-1 and one at home. Okay, 2-3-1, and one, all right. Yeah. But I'm simplifying it for the folks. Well, again, we, I think we talked about this last show. We joke about it. It's the polar opposite of when Jeremy and I were, you know, across the street, sure. <laughs> across the hallway with, the, with uh, Missouri State. You know, we're still undefeated on the road and struggling a bit to find out how to win at home. Um, and then there's the overtime thing. Up until last night, we had been undefeated at, in overtime and shootouts. So, yeah, we just got to find a way to, to you know, kind of get more focused at home for sure. Uh, I thought we had figured that out Friday night, and then Saturday we just kind of went back to the, you know, playing what we conceive as a weaker team and, you know, didn't, didn't put the effort forward that we should have. Yeah, I, um, I mean, my take on that last game is we didn't play bad hockey, but we certainly didn't play good hockey. Yeah. We just went out and played hockey. They didn't – I mean, it, it just – I mean, you, you can't look at something and, and say, wow, he was terrible. Yeah. It, there, there was none of that. We just didn't really play good. Well, the positive things are that you got a win. Uh, you took uh, the same rank number 17. Now, of course, 17 in the West for them and 17 in the Central for the Panthers – but you, you played them into overtime. You've got additional scoring from other lines. Defensively, it seemed like the team played very well. So it, you're right there uh, yeah. as far as being in, in with everything. Yeah, and I think when it comes to the rankings, we're, you know, we finally started getting rankings out last week. And you know, at 17, we can't really complain considering where we finished last year, where this program finished last year at 35 in the region. 17 is great. We obviously need to keep moving up. Um, as you said, 17 in our regions, you know, slightly different from 17 in East Texas Baptist region. Uh, you know, if there were national rankings, we'd be considerably higher than them, which is why it's frustrating how yesterday went. But I think even with the results this weekend, I think we're in a good position to at worst stay pat at 17. But I think based on some other games that went on this weekend, we have a chance to at least move up a spot, potentially two, probably not. But I would, wouldn't be surprised if we moved up a spot. You're watching the Drury Panthers Coaches Show brought to you by Hold Fast Brewing. Assistant coach Cliff Cook and Brett Lathan, and we'll be back with the head coach of the Drury Panthers and Jeremy Law. You're watching the Drury Panthers Coaches Show, brought to you by Hold Fast Brewing. Now with us is the head coach of the Drury Panthers, Jeremy Law, and Kevin Boyer, the assistant athletic director for non-NCAA sports at Drury. We'll start with you, Jeremy. I know we talked with Cliff about this last weekend's games, and obviously it's got to be tough when you come in really thinking you're going to win a couple of games. Game one, great. Game two, tough. Uh, your thoughts about the weekend? Yeah, it's, it's similar to what uh, Coach Cliff and Brett said earlier here. We, uh, you know, had a really good game Friday. We were prepared, and I thought our game plan was was great, and uh, guys executed, and we played played very well. But um, Saturday, I think maybe a little bit of mentality that that we were going to be in full control. And uh, credit to ETBU, they they played a good game and uh, kept it close with us. And at that point, anything can happen. So. Well, let's talk about some of the exciting news that uh, has been released and that uh, Drury now will be moving up to a Division I team. 
and they'll be adding a Division Three team. So within less than a year, uh, things are happening. You're back up to the level that you were at with Missouri State. Yeah, we're we're super excited about the future for our organization and, our, and for our school. Uh, that was a goal of Cliff and I's and Brett's uh, uh, when we got here was uh, getting getting us to the D1 level and uh, what we're familiar with. And um, I think it's. It's just a, a more professional level where uh, teams that we play against, everyone takes it very serious. It's, it's the, what we strive to, to be at. So um, we're very excited about that. Well, Kevin, with uh, your blessing, now there's two teams coming in. Uh, did you, uh, at least on your side, hockey-wise, think this would happen this soon? Uh, that was our plan. That's what we hoped for. You know, when, when Jeremy and, and Cliff and Brett all came on board, uh, back last spring that, you know, one of the first conversations uh, Jeremy and I had was about this. So, you know, the wheels turned a little bit slower than what we even uh, uh, had hoped. But, yeah, so we're very excited about the future of Drury Hockey and about our program and about our university. So, so I'll give you a little bit of a trivia scenario, and it may still be on the website, but way back when, uh, a few years ago, when Drew was kind of thinking about getting into hockey, uh, I had played goaltender when they just got a group of guys together to, to play in practice. And my name is still on the website as the goaltender. So I don't know if that's still on there. If you go back and look, I don't I don't know. Know, 2017. Uh, the person that takes care of our non-NCAA SID stuff is standing back there. So we'll have to check with the cookie to see. Uh, obviously, obviously, we may have to update that a little bit. But, oh, come uh, on, keep it. I want. Oh, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. We could, <laughs> we, we could do we much, could, we much could, better in the goaltending yeah. department. <laughs> okay, that so. you, you got me there. You buy me a beer on that one, but <laughs> yeah, no. But seriously, though, uh, this obviously is a, is a great time for jury hockey. Yeah, we're really excited about it, and uh, not only adding the, uh, the the second team, but moving up to Division One. And I got to be honest, my ho uh, hockey knowledge. Uh, was pretty non-existent until a couple of years ago, and uh, and I learned more about the game. I've always loved watching the game and appreciate the game, but I uh, learned more about it and about the dif different divisions and stuff like that. And thanks to uh, Coach Law and Cookie and those guys, but uh, yeah, we we are excited about adding, you know, more kids on campus, more hockey players, and the uh, the environment and, and the culture that we're we have to offer Drury. We we're excited about. Jeremy, this is a situation where you have a lot of connections in Canada. I'm sure you've already started recruiting. And if you haven't, well, <laughs> that's that's going to be a tough go for next year. But I know you have. Uh, how special is it to be able to start now recruiting for a Division One team? Yeah, it's, it, it definitely helps for sure. I, I'm going up to Canada for a couple of weeks in December to recruit. And um, we're, we're looking everywhere, not just Canada. I do have a lot of a lot of connections up there for for players so yeah we're, we're starting to build the team and uh, we'll be having meetings with all our current players and uh, kind of you know telling and asking what their future might hold for for us as well so and now you have to deal with two teams yeah. so uh, not necessarily filling up one team which will probably be easy to do but now you have to fill up a division three team and, and in a sense you're recruiting times two Yep, it will we'll be hard at work. That'll be uh, the plan for the next three to four months is, is getting players committed here and uh, starting campus visits and all that kind of good stuff. So a lot of things going on, but of course you have to worry about this season right now. And, and with a 10-3-1 record, uh, so far so good. Maybe need to improve the home record a little bit. Uh, but, yeah. you know, how talk about being 8-0 and on the road. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I can't really explain it. I don't have an answer. We we prepared, I think, equally for, for both, you know, home and road games. We've just had success on the road and uh, maybe some puck luck and, you know, a couple overtime wins on the road. But, uh, yeah, at home we haven't had the best showing for our fans, and we hope to hope to change that. So Five more home games, I think, for the remainder of the season, which has got to be tough, too, when you have more road home, uh, road games and home games. But uh, yeah. either way, it's still a winning season. Yeah, well, we'll take it with you know being undefeated on the road and having 17 road games this year. So um, yeah, we're excited. We're in Bradley after Thanksgiving break, and uh, that'll be those will be good good games with the, with another regional opponent. So. You've been watching the Drury Panthers Coaches Show. I'm Steve Casson, the host, along with Jeremy Law, the head coach of the Drury Panthers, and Kevin Boyer, who's the assistant athletic director for non-NCAA sports. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>